All righty, folks. Well, thank you for giving me the opportunity to talk today. So today I'm not even going to be talking about what I'm doing at Virginia Tech um, with my illustrious advisor, Dr. Jacques, in the back. Um, this is about my research that I actually did when I was a master's student at Auburn University um, related to non-destructive testing, namely using the impact echo method. One of the things that we are interested in doing is developing what I'm calling an automated novice tailored approach to conducting these impact echo assessments. And we'll be talking about what today that even constitutes. So why would you need a novice tailored approach to doing impact echo conditions assessments of reinforced concrete elements, bridge decks? columns, whatever, okay? In the current literature, you know, when you read things, people will tell you if you're doing an impact echo evaluation, in order to actually effectively interpret the data, you need to have pattern recognition skills and experience and expertise, right? And so one of the questions we ask is, okay, you know, if you have a typical scenario like this where you have an impact echo evaluation where I cause an impact force, measure the surface displacement, look at the frequency spectra resulting from that impact, and I have that for a sound location on the left, and I get a typical frequency spectra, right? And then I have a defect on the right. The biggest difference here is that you need to be able to look at the spectra and realize the shift in the dominant frequency excited during you know, impact echo testing and be able to recognize that that shift in frequency and the frequency in of itself is indicative of defect, right? And so what about, you know, somebody who's new? What about somebody who's never done this before? They don't have the expertise, the years of experience looking at these things in order to effectively interpret this. And so all they're going to do is look at those. They don't have the cheat sheet like I do where they see whether the problem's there or not. So they just go like that. They give you the question mark. They don't know what they're doing, right? I mean, they want to know what they're doing, but there's no guidance out there to help them. And so what we're trying to do is come up with an approach to more effectively square the circle here and give them an approach to, while they're developing that pattern recognition skills, still be able to effectively use this method, okay? And so we did this as a part of a larger study on NDE that we were doing at Auburn. Um, just to show some of y'all what that might look like, impact echo testing. We did it on some tiny bridge deck specimens, seven foot by three foot in the top left. Again, you just have this unit which has an impactor, a solenoid, and then a surface transducer to measure the displacement. Fast Fourier transform, get to a frequency spectra. And so we did a bunch of testing on a four inch by four inch grid on some of these laboratory specimens that I'm showing in the top left as well as we built a full scale, so it's a 32 foot by 18 foot reinforced concrete bridge deck down in Alabama, build it. We put a bunch of defects in all of these specimens, right? So there's sound concrete, there's delaminations, there's corroded reinforcement, deterioration, voids. We put all this in these decks to give us benchmarks to evaluate whether we can develop a method to help novices actually correctly look at impact echo data and say, is this a sound piece of concrete or do I have a problem, right? So when I send the crew out on the bridge deck, they're jackhammering up the right spots. That's basically the idea. And so you're going to see a bunch of like test results which emanated from tests like that, but I just wanted to put it in everybody's head what exactly we're testing. We're looking for defects in blocks of sound concrete essentially, okay? And so what we're going to be doing is talking about what this method actually is, which I call the Automated User-Based Impact Echo Method, or AUBI for Auburn, right? Okay. See what I did there? Um, and then some validation things that we did after the fact. Okay, Zach, you made this thing. whoop de do Does it work? That's the question everybody wants to know. Where are we going with this in the future? So we wanted to come up with an approach to actually help people um, interpret data in a way that wasn't just looking at frequency specters and losing their mind, right? And so one of the things we were thinking about, is there any clear statistical um, you know, observations that we can make about impact echo data sets in order to you know, effectively separate sound concrete from a defect of piece of concrete, right? So the first thing we want to do is we want to take a bunch of observations of sound concrete and see what does that look like statistically. Yes, I use the statistics words. That's where we're going. Okay, so what did I do? I took some of my bridge deck specimens, and all I did was pull out all the frequencies that I measured with my impact echo device over sound concrete. And so I plotted a cumulative probability distribution, which you can see here on the left. And it should look familiar. Some people may have had stats at this point. You know, it looks like that S curve that we see is indicative of a normally distributed random variable. Okay, so that's pretty cool. So now we know that, you know, impact echo data for sound concrete, that's normally distributed. Maybe that'll be helpful. The thing that's cool is, I don't know if anybody's ever used log paper before, but if you pr actually plot a normal distribution on log paper, it has a transformed vertical axis, it plots as a straight line. 
So that's what I'm doing on the right. Hey, Zach, that doesn't look like a log scale. Okay, it's not a log scale, but you can do a coordinate transformation in a regular Cartesian scale to produce the same thing, so I'm not actually hand sketching things in log paper. That's all I'm doing there. But you see the same trend, right? This except this axiom that I'm preaching, which is that when you plot a normal variable on log paper or the standard normal variable vertical axis, a normally distributed function shows up as a straight line. I see a straight line on the right, right? Okay, what's easier to deal with, an S or a straight line? Straight line, right? So, okay, so do we have anything out there that we can use to treat straight lines? Well, that'll be the question, right? And so we're going to be looking at a bunch of plots of impact echo data, but realize it'll all be the straight line. It just means it's normally distributed. Okay, so Zach, okay, it's cool. Standard, you know, impact echo observations, sound deck, that's normally distributed. Who cares, right? What if you put some defects in there? Let's take those lab specimens now and reintroduce all the defects in the specimens. I'm going to plot it on this transform coordinate axis. Well, what do we see? I see all the black dots again. Those are my sound observations of the deck. That means there's no problem, right? And all the little blue X's that I introduced are now the problem childs. It's the delaminations. What do you see? Well, now I see a second straight line. I see two straight lines. And on the right, if I have defects that result in high frequencies and low frequencies relative to the sound distribution, I see three straight lines. Okay, so I got defects. When I put them in, they're straight lines, and so they're normally distributed as well. But What's so easy here is like, look, you know, can we separate visually what two straight lines are? You know, two straight lines are going to connect somewhere, may I call them linear segments, and they're going to match each other at some location, let's call it the break point. Well, if the break point is just the point where these two straight lines are, and the two straight lines is one of them is sound concrete and one is the defective concrete, if I can just locate the break point or the, in, the intersection of those two straight lines, I have a threshold now where I can separate all the sound concrete from the defect of concrete. People can then take that threshold and then go out and know exactly where every point is, whether it's a defect or not, depending on how that frequency relates to the threshold. Right, so now instead of just looking at frequency spectra, we can just go out and do that. Basically break this thing up into straight lines, look for the break point, and if we can find that, we can separate everything, see what's a defect, what's sound concrete. And there happens to be statistical approaches out there to do this one of which is called segmented linear regression. Only problem is it needs initial guess of the break point. Uh, we have an approach to do it for the sake of time. I won't spend too much time on it, but basically if we have a normally distributed random variable and we take some of our lab specimens and we figure out what's a good typical coefficient of variation for sound concrete, that was about 2%, right? And so we can actually calculate a theoretical mean or the center point of my straight line, use a 2% coefficient of variation calculate a standard error, and then actually just subtract or add two standard errors from that theoretical center point of that straight line of sound concrete. And what that is going to do, we suspect, is put us close to those breakpoints where we'll then be matching the defective concrete. That's sort of the idea. And so the only question is, Zach, well, do I have a case where I have one breakpoint or do I have two? That's the question. Do I have low frequency defects and high frequency defects or just one? right? You know, and so I don't have the time to get into it today. We have a procedure that automates this, right? Because we're trying to do this in a way that's not, you know, detrimental to the, um, the user. So it's in a paper that's hopefully going to get published soon. So maybe y'all can look at it another time, but we have something out there for that. So let's just quickly look and see how well does this thing work, right? If I can automate it, I can use this linear regression, pick out the breakpoints and separate things. Can I do meaningful condition assessments? So we went ahead and we actually used this on, this is an overlaid contour plot um, of our, some of our lab specimens. So basically you can see the defects in those hatched areas. Green means the method predicted that it was a sound piece of concrete. Red means that it predicted it was a defect, right? And so you can see for this top specimen, which had shallow delaminations, the method was successfully predicting the sound locations and you can see the red correlated to the spatial location of the defect. So that works good. We had a specimen down here on the right where we actually had three different levels of corrosion activity. Big time corrosion on the right, little in the middle, none on the left. Also agrees with it right there. So this method was able to actually see from a blind prediction where is the problem and where is it not the problem. And you might say, okay, Zach, what about the big boy, the big bridge deck? How to do on that with bigger area, more defects, okay? And so this is just a top-down view of that bridge deck I was showing you before where all the defects were at. Just to kind of show you, we got corrosion, we got voids, we got delaminations. You want it, it's in there, 
right? So how well can this thing theoretically do, impact echo? Let's not even talk about the method for now, right? We went ahead, and this is the theoretical best case accuracy impact echo if you know the condition at every single location. I don't happen to know that, but that's theoretically the best you could do with impact echo. Academia, I'm still in the student, so it's an A minus. 92% correct prediction rate, right? Well, how well did the method we developed use? How did Albi do? This is the Albi predicted condition map. It got 88% of it right, so that's a B plus. It's pretty dang good. It was at four percentage points, blind prediction, just using the statistical approach, and that was that. And so it worked pretty good. So you get the green check mark if it works, right? Okay. Future work, and then I'll wrap up here, is just that, you know, we've done this on this lab data. We want to go ahead and see how does this do for a real bridge deck? How does it do for a real concrete element with a really good ground truth? Because if all this boils down to is plotting data in a way that people just have to say, where does one straight line end and the other one start? That doesn't get much easier than that, right? And we got some automated ways to help with that. So thank you. Any questions? <laughs>